We're told a shark can sense a drop of blood in the water a mile away. I'm filming these sharks when this eel bit my hand and I'm bleeding literally just feet from hundreds of hammerhead sharks. And not one shark showed any signs of aggression. How am I still here? Why wasn't I attacked? And why are all these sharks swimming in place? All of this and more on this episode of Oceans Unknown. The Galapagos Islands are known for their schooling hammerhead sharks. Wolf and Darwin Islands are two of the best places in the world if you want to jump on the water and see the schooling hammerheads. We headed out to Wolf Island to dive on a site named Elephant Rock. Hold on, what are we doing today? Shark diving. Shark diving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Rise and shine, we got a breakfast date with some hammerhead sharks. We set up our gear, analyzed our nitrox, suited up, and we headed out to Elephant Rock to swim with some sharks. This is Elephant Rock on the left, and this is Wolf Island on the right. The currents would pinch between these two land masses and create some really strong currents that the hammerhead sharks love. We were hoping to see some sharks in this area right here. The current was pretty strong this day, so our plan was to drop in the water ahead of the points where we're hoping to see the sharks. After dropping in the water, we can then drift with the water to the point where the stronger current is. The Galapagos has little to no coral at all. It's made up of volcanic rock that's covered with sharp barnacles. I say this now because in a couple minutes, you're gonna get upset that we're touching the reef, but we're not hurting any coral. As the current got stronger, we knew we were getting closer to Elephant Rock. Once we got closer to the spot, we noticed the sharks were here. Because of the strong currents in the Galapagos, you're instructed by the dive masters to let out all of your air, become negatively buoyant, find a rock to hold on to or brace yourself up against so you don't get sucked up by the current and sent out all on your own. Please don't leave me any upset messages about touching the reef. This is how you dive in the Galapagos. Everywhere else, yes, don't touch the reef. But here, you either grab onto a rock or you'll be sent off miles away on your own, possibly into a school of hammerhead sharks. I mean, you can tell how crazy the current is just by your bubbles. On a normal dive, bubbles just go up in a calm, poetic manner like this one. But here in the Galapagos, the current just blends up the bubbles and sends them out sideways. It's pretty insane. Not only were there sharks here, but directly above us were hundreds of bottlenose dolphins. You can barely see the dolphins near the surface, and we're between 80 and 85 feet deep on this dive. That's about 26 meters, and the visibility is around 50 feet, so it's hard to see the dolphins. If you want to do this, please get in as many dives as possible. Get as much experience as you can and make sure all your gear is working and you're familiar with it so you can focus on the dive without any distractions. Test out your gear and get as comfortable as diving as you possibly can. You don't want to miss out on a once in a lifetime opportunity because you're not comfortable diving or comfortable with your gear. The dives in Galapagos are advanced dives in 90 feet of water with extreme currents. Because of the depth and the strong currents, it's very easy to go through your air. You might only get a 30 minute dive. The temperature and visibility, it varies throughout the year. Galapagos isn't really known for the best visibility. During the months of June through November, the visibility is not as good because the cold water is moving into the islands from the Humboldt current. However, the current brings in nutrients which attracts more life. So the trade-off of lower visibility also means a better chance of seeing more life. The video you're watching now was shot at the end of March. 
Yes, I mean, it was intense. We were whipping around. I was bracing myself up against this rock when I felt something bite my hand. It felt like a bunch of needles just all got jammed in my hand at once. And I looked around to see what had bit my hand and I saw this eel. It could have been a lot worse. It was just a warning bite. Eels can really rip into your hands. They have a lot of teeth and they will bite to protect their territory. Look at this green moray eel I filmed off of Pompano Beach, Florida. See the teeth? Notice the teeth on the roof of his mouth are pointing backwards. That's to hold on to its prey. And watch this snapping action of the jaw. Eels will use this snapping behavior as a signal. Now watch the eel in the Galapagos snap his jaw. Did you see that? This is a warning to keep your distance. Just keep your distance and don't stick your hand in their face like I did. Luckily, I was wearing five millimeter gloves. The eel bit right through the gloves and into my hands. My knuckles got it the worst. That's where I was really bleeding. I mean, you can see how the eel just really ripped into these gloves. I was actually more worried about the bacteria on the teeth of the eel than my blood being in the water with the sharks. Luckily, the boat has some antiseptic and I was able to clean out my wounds. This could have been a lot worse. Okay, so my hands bit, I'm bleeding. My hands throbbing, it hurt. Um, there wasn't a lot of blood, but there's a lot of sharks and they're really close to us. I need to get a hold of my dive buddy and tell him that, you know, my hand's been bit. So I looked at him and I did this, you know, my hands bit. He was like, are you okay? I mean, we're diving with sharks, <laughs> you never know. I'm like, no, no, I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay. So, I mean, it was gonna take a lot more than my hand getting bit for me to go back up the surface and not film this. I mean, all I could think about was just trying to find the right frame and shoot this so I could share it with you and the rest of the world. This was one of the coolest things I've ever seen underwater. Seeing these sharks swim like this in place was incredible. There were so many sharks, you couldn't even count them. Just one shark can sense one drop of blood in the water a mile away. And not one single shark showed any signs of aggression. How am I still here? Why wasn't I attacked? Any of these sharks could have easily taken me out if they really wanted to. There's always been this big misconception that sharks are just waiting to eat us. I used to think the same thing. After diving with sharks, I realized they're just not after us like I used to think. I mean, they are sharks and they can hurt you. Always respect the shark, never provoke a shark, and always keep your distance. If you want to be in the water with a shark, make sure you go with a guide. Hammerheads like to hunt for squid at night in deeper water. They're not out to eat humans. According to the International Shark Attack File, there have only been 17 unprovoked hammerhead shark attacks on humans since the year 1580, and none of those attacks were fatal. You can see that they're not even interested in eating these fish that are being tossed around like debris in the middle of a big storm. You would think these fish would be an easy catch for the sharks. Another easy catch for sharks are when the fish are preoccupied when spawning. 
The next day we're doing another dive on Wolf Island and the krail fish were spawning. The female would shoot up to release the eggs and the males would swarm in and release the sperm. Fish are extremely vulnerable during this time and I thought for sure the sharks would attack them. I kept filming and thinking the sharks were going to take advantage of this easy meal. But they never did. If sharks are the killing machines we think they are, then why weren't they taking advantage of this easy meal? We may not be on the shark's menu, but they are sharks and they could hurt you if they wanted to. So always respect a shark. And if you're wondering what it'd be like to swim out in the middle of one of these schools, hit the subscribe button because it's going to be in a future episode. It happened to us by accident on another dive. And it was intense and it led to a search and rescue of one of our divers. So make sure you hit the subscribe button. You might have noticed this scar on this shark. This is a mating scar. She's a cool shark. If you'd like to support the making of this episode, please consider purchasing a print of this shark from my store. The link is in the description below. So why are all these sharks swimming in place? What we do know is hammerheads like the current. Even in this dive spot, if there's no current, there's no sharks. Hammerheads have to keep swimming with their mouths open to move water over their gills so that they can breathe. Some sharks, like these white tip reef sharks I shot at Roca Partida, rest on the bottom during the day and hunt at night. They don't need to keep swimming like the hammerhead sharks do because they can pump water through their gills without swimming. Roca Partida is an incredible spot on our planet. I'm creating a couple episodes just on Roca, so make sure you subscribe to this channel. You don't want to miss out on the Roca Partida episodes. Hammerhead sharks are also negatively buoyant and they'll sink if they stop swimming. Some experts have proven that the shape of the head actually helps create lift similar to a wing on an aircraft. Let's go back to the shark with a scar. The current moves over the head and creates this low pressure on top and high pressure on the bottom, very similar on how air moves over a wing on an airplane. The high pressure creates lift and this helps keep the hammerhead buoyant. The hammerhead also has a very large and powerful top portion of the tail, known as the upper lobe. The angle of the upper lobe produces a downward pitching movement on the shark. The energy from this movement helps create more high pressure under its wing-shaped head, which in return produces even more lift for the shark. So the shape of the tail and the head work together to help keep the shark from sinking. Watch how the hammerheads will slightly move their head just up and down and take advantage of this current. We also know that the hammerheads move to deeper water at night to hunt for squid. If the food source is nearby and they could use this current right here to breathe and keep buoyant, then it makes sense for the sharks to stay here and swim in place. So the sharks are basically killing time during the day before the big hunt at night. I did not want this dive to end. I just wanted to stay down here and keep filming, but we were pushing our time on our tanks and uh, we needed to return back to the surface. The dive master is hitting the back of his tank. You can hear it right here. That means it's time for us to go. You can see how close we are to the sharks and we are still negatively buoyant so we can use the rocks to kind of push ourselves along. We're definitely still fighting the current here and um, you know my hand is bleeding and it's still throbbing. Right now we just want to keep the group together so you want to stay with your dive buddy and we'll try to find a place where we can safely ascend. We're about 80 feet deep at this point and uh, we have sharks above us and in front of us and the current is really strong. So we're just trying to keep the group together and find a, an area where the current isn't as intense and get up to shallower water. Look at all the hammerheads above us. There were sharks everywhere. This kind of diving is extremely difficult. That's why I was saying earlier to try to get as much experience diving as you possibly can. It's definitely a bucket list to see the hammerhead sharks. 
The barnacles are really sharp too. They'll end up wearing down your gloves and, uh, and rip up your wetsuit. So this kind of diving is really hard on your gear. Once we find an area where the current isn't as intense, we could put some air in our BC and then make a safe ascent. Diving in the Galapagos is an incredible experience. There really is no other place like it on our planet. I hope that someday you'll have the chance to experience Galapagos. If you like this video, please help me out by giving it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And if you can, share it with a friend. This helps let the algorithm for YouTube know that you appreciate my work. And in return, it helps me create more content for you. If you'd like to support my channel in other ways, please see the options in the descriptions below. Thank you very much for your support.